uh, and forever, frankly. Um, but I want to start with paid traffic, right? Um, like if you're scaling your store, if you do any reasonable amount of revenue, paid traffic is part of the game. And the problem with paid traffic is paid traffic is expensive. There is a reason why Facebook and Google are Facebook and Google. Um, they've really nailed uh, the paid traffic game. Um, and Q4 is going to be way, way uh, more competitive and more expensive. Part of the blessing of what happened with COVID, at least for e-commerce, is massive growth in a ton of uh, e-commerce industries. Unless you were in hardcore travel-related industries, um, airline-related industries, you know, that type of stuff, uh, you probably saw a pretty good month in April and May, and that's continued. That's good, but for traffic and paid traffic specifically, Q4 is going to be rough. Um, Brick-and-mortar retailers are moving online. Target, Walmart, Home Depot, a lot of the big guys are not opening for Thanksgiving. Many of them are talking about not doing Black Friday promotions. And as an e-commerce store owner, you need to realize that that means they are going to be shifting online and they have massive budgets. And so traffic has always been expensive. It's going to be more expensive uh, in Q4. And you're probably still going to be able to get a solid return. You might be able to make a return on ad spend profitable, especially if you've been doing it for a while. Um, but one of the things that makes paid traffic way more expensive is abandons. If people start the checkout process and then bail, you're still paying for those people and they can be extremely expensive. And the problem's pretty big. If you look at your actual store, 50% or more of your checkouts are almost certain to abandon. Uh, and many of those happen later in the actual payment process. Um, so for example, um, you know, they'll get into checkout, they'll start the shipping process, they'll start the, uh, get to the payment page, but then they'll ultimately abandon. So it can definitely uh, be a big problem. And Q4 is going to be stronger uh, or, or is going to be uh, worse as far as abandon. So I want to dig into some of that data. Uh, while I do that, Angel on my team is listening. Let me know if the audio is uh, better now I moved closer to the microphone. But uh, getting into Q4, uh, like I mentioned, COVID brought a ton of growth um, in uh, e-commerce, which is great. Um, Black Friday is always bigger every single year. It always grows year to year, which is great. Um, but this year looks like it's going to be significantly bigger. So I wanted to share some numbers on that because it's going to impact the abandons that we're going to talk about in just a second. Um, it depends how you look at the projections. I'm sure that there's been other presentations where people are talking about, you know, how big Black Friday is going to be this year. But uh, from data that we've been doing, because forecasting is a super, super important part of our business. We need to make sure we have enough agents. We need to have enough staff. We need to be able to handle the traffic that's coming in. The data that we see is that Black Friday basically grows about 16% every single year. So this Black Friday without COVID would have been about 16% higher than the previous Black Friday. And that goes back a number of years. But what we did is we looked at basically April and May year over year. So basically what happened after COVID that made April and May much bigger than a normal April and May. And then we basically forecasted that out into Q4 of 2020 and said, okay, how much bigger is Q4 going to be this year? Um, and what we're seeing is that Q4 is going to be 45% higher at least uh, compared to last year. So three times as big as it would normally be uh, with the normal year over year growth. And, and I think that's conservative. Nobody really knows, um, but it's going to be significantly bigger, which is great. With that said, COVID is uh, also going to bring a lot of hassles uh, in Q4. Um, there's a ton of uncertainties in shipping. Shipping has been a problem since late March, early April. Um, there's tons of delays on the USPS side, priority mail, other carriers, and also internationally. Uh, we've got clients in Europe, all over the place. They're all having the same thing. And it's not going to get better in Q4. The shipping issue with COVID is not going to get better in Q4. And so that's something that I think is going to come to a break point uh, in Q4 because buyers uh, know that they're not getting orders on time. Buyers are concerned that they're not getting orders on time. And so that's going to make the abandons that happen anyway. It's going to make those abandons even worse. And so one takeaway that I want you guys to get out of this session is to be ready for what's coming in Q4. It's going to be bigger, which is great, but it's also going to be more complicated than it was in uh, prior years. And so we, we've got to be ready for that. And abandons is one thing uh, that you want to make sure you attack correctly. 
What I'm gonna dig into today is I wanna show you um, how serious the abandoned problem is and what you can do about it in your particular store. Um, and so this particular site that I'm using, it's a clothing website, um, kind of niche clothing, but not too crazy. Uh, they do a lot of revenue though, 900K per month. And the, the reason why I'm using something that's a pretty big scale is I wanna have the law of large numbers work in my favor, right? I want you to be able to see that the data is valid because we're working with big numbers throughout the entire funnel. But I also want to be clear, this will scale down to whatever size your store is. So if you're doing 100K a month, if you're doing 50K a month, the ratios are still going to apply for you. So I just want to make that part clear. Um, also, the other thing um, is, sorry, I'm pulling up uh, the, the Zoom chat. If you guys have questions along the way, throw them into the chat. Uh, I think I'll be able to see them uh, and I'll try to hit those as we go. But um, the other part I wanted to mention here is they have pretty strong site-wide conversion metrics. They're converting about three and a half percent of people. Um, average order value is pretty strong at about $50. Um, and so it's a, it's a pretty strong site overall. But what I want to walk you through is their abandons. So in this particular store, 10,500 people per week start checkout, but don't complete the actual checkout process. 10 and a half thousand people per week. This is based on Google Analytics data. It'll make sense why I'm viewing it in this particular type of view rather than the funnel view in a second. Um, but I just wanna emphasize the scope of abandons. And if we dig deeper into this, right? 10,500 people per week abandoning the checkout process. It's 40,000 people a month. Um, if we dig deeper, the second row here is the payment page. And so this is the number of people uh, per week that abandon on the payment page, right? So the credit card screen on Shopify in this example, but same, same uh, ratios typically apply to any platform that you're using. So 26,000 people per month abandon on the payment page. That's $1.2 million per month of abandons just on that credit card screen. And I, I wanna just emphasize that the store is big, so the number sounds big, but the percentages are going to be the same for you. You're gonna get thousands of people per month going into the checkout. Uh, a big chunk of those are going to abandon and half of those abandons are gonna happen on the payment page. And so you can absolutely save those and I wanna walk you through how to do that. You're probably already using abandoned cart emails. Uh, if you're not, you absolutely should. We have nothing to do with abandoned cart emails other than making them a little bit more effective, which I'm gonna to get to at the end of the session. Uh, but if you're not using Clavio or any of the other abandoned cart uh, options that are out there, absolutely get it in place. Second thing that you should be doing is retargeting ads. Derek mentioned that earlier from one of the sponsors, right? Show ads to people if they abandon uh, the purchase process. But the issue with all of these is they don't address why someone abandoned. People abandon because they have questions. Something pops into their head, they go, oh, I wonder if it's gonna arrive on time, or oh, what if my wife doesn't like it? Can I send it back, right? Something comes up and then they leave. Live chat can be used to answer those questions both on the website, but also as part of your cart abandonment emails, your cart abandonment ads, and anywhere else where you're trying to recover those cart abandons. So I want to walk you through with this particular client's data, how big the actual saves can be. Um, most people think of live chat as a customer service tool, but it's absolutely a revenue driver, a conversion tool. And I think this will lock that in for you. So remember on this particular site, uh, these guys are losing 26,000 people per month on the payment page, credit card screen, almost a thousand people every single day. They convert three and a half percent of everybody that comes to the site of all of their traffic, right? So they're converting pretty darn well. If you can convert 7% of those abandons into actual sales, that's going to turn in to a million dollars a year in additional revenue, $88,000 per month. So what I want you to take away from this particular section is when you run your numbers for how many people that are abandoning in your checkout process, you're gonna see significant amounts of revenue that you can drive. Saving 7% here just on the payment page is absolutely reasonable. We actually typically see that closer to 10% with these types of numbers, but 7% turns into another $88,000 per month. So make sure that you're using something to recover all of uh, the payment page abandons and the abandons throughout the funnel. At Helpflow, what we do is we provide 24 seven live chat teams for over a hundred e-commerce stores. That means our team is there to answer questions 
on your behalf for your visitors. And we do it 24 seven. We've done it for hundreds of sites, millions of chats. We've driven over a hundred million dollars with this approach. Uh, we've been doing it for a long time. All we do is live chat. With that said, like I mentioned, you do not have to work with us to drive these results. I'm gonna walk you through the tactics that you can use yourself today. And again, feel free to throw anything into uh, the chat if there's questions. So three places where live chat fits in to really drive conversions. First piece is the checkout process. Second piece is the product and category pages. And third piece is uh, in your email cart abandonment sequence, which I'm gonna dig into at the end. So first thing, I already touched on some of this, so I'll move pretty quickly through the checkout process. But in the checkout process, the goal of what you're trying to do is to predict if somebody's going to abandon and then engage automatically before they abandon to answer that question that's causing them to abandon. And so what you can do is basically identify the patterns that lead up to an abandon. So you can use Google Analytics to basically look at all of the abandons on the site and then get the patterns of how many pages do they look at? What types of product searches do they do? What types of products lead to higher abandons? And then what you can do is you can figure out, okay, for 70% of the people that abandon on the site, these are the three things that happen right before they abandon. Before they're thinking about abandoning, this is what happens. What you need to do is engage with them, you know, one or two steps before they abandon. I'm not talking about um, a uh, exit intent sequence or an exit intent pop-up. Those work, um, but people have already mentally abandoned by the time they uh, trigger an exit intent. That's, that's why it's triggered. What we do is we figure out what are the steps before somebody's going to abandon and engage with them there before they're actually leaving. You engage with them, spark up a conversation, and ultimately are able to drive, uh, drive a lot of them to buy by answering those questions. And so bottom line, using chat in the checkout process is a critical part of being able to save those abandons. If you're on Shopify Plus, super, super easy to do this. You can add chat in the checkout. It's part of Shopify Plus. If you're not on Plus, you can do this in, uh, in a way where you track what people are doing in the checkout process. And then when they leave the checkout process to click the back button, that's when you can invite them to chat. It does not perform as well, but it does work. It's better than a full exit intent pop-up because people almost always click the back button to leave checkout uh, before they abandon. Um, but it's, it's much better if you have Shopify Plus. And depending on your numbers, if you're doing you know, 40, 50K per month in sales, Adding live chat with Shopify Plus will pay for itself. Uh, it'll fund Shopify Plus for you. So definitely look into it. But bottom line, use chat in the checkout process to save the abandons that are coming up this quarter. Second thing is engaging with people that are uh, highly engaged in your products, but not moving into the checkout process. This is the equivalent of somebody walking up and down the aisle in a brick and mortar store, uh, but not moving up to the cash register. So I want to show you how that works. This is an example site. Uh, this is not uh, a client of ours, but I thought it was a good site and uh, we're doing some work on the house. So I figured I'd use the site that we're looking at. Um, these guys sell house plans, houseplans.com, pretty solid volume, right? Uh, or pretty solid domain. But in this particular case, um, they do a search um, for what they're looking for. They land on the search results and then they start filtering by various items, right? They start looking at different products, but they don't move into a product page. You can track this by basically seeing how long they've been on the page. You can track the scroll depth as they go down the page. Um, that's a little more technical, but pretty simple in Google Tag Manager. Uh, and then you can ultimately track that they do all these things that are engagement, but they don't move into the product. And so uh, in that particular case, you can invite them to chat. And in this case, offer help uh, to find the right house plan, right? You can also do this on product pages. And so if they do get to a product page in this particular case, they're gonna review specifications about the product, they're gonna configure the product, they're gonna you know, read through everything, but they're not gonna move into the checkout process or, or in this case, you know, save, uh, save the product to their, uh, to their account. And so again, you track this by tracking page activity, scroll depth, clicks on different tabs within the page, those types of things, and ultimately realizing that they're not adding to carts in most cases, or in this site, they'd probably focus it on not saving a house plan because one of the things they do here is they save the house plans. Um, what you're doing again is you're tracking engagement and engaging uh, with them to answer their questions. Let me show you some data from that particular client that we talked about, okay? Uh, and again, the ratios are probably gonna be similar for your site. Uh, these guys get 103,000 visits per week. 42,000 of those per week on this second row view at least one product, 
but don't move into the checkout process. So they're engaged, they're interested, but they don't move into the actual checkout process. You wanna dig deeper though, right? Like one product view is not enough to say, oh, this person's a hot prospect, right? Um, so this last number is the number of people that view multiple products back and forth between multiple products, but they don't move in to the checkout process, right? Um, so 88% of the people that view a product but don't move forward, view two products, at least two products, and move, uh, but don't move forward. So 37,000 people, um, you can save a portion of these before they abandon. And if we run some numbers here really quickly, uh, there's 148,000 people per month that view multiple products, but don't move into checkout. Remember, the numbers on the left are a weekly number, numbers on the right are monthly. I wanted to generalize this to be all monthly. 148,000 people per month. If you can convert one and a quarter percent of these people, which is, I think, less than the site-wide conversion rate. I think the site-wide was three and a half. So it's about half the site-wide conversion rate. That turns into 1,800 people per month, which is $89,000 in revenue. Another $1 million per year in additional found revenue just by engaging with people that uh, are clearly interested in your products, but they're not moving forward into the checkout process. So again, the numbers here can be huge. And in your particular case, you're going to see similar ratios. So remember, in this client's business, they're doing about a million a month. There was a million in checkout and there was a million in product pages. Your, your actual scope might not be that big, but it's going to have significant revenue. And it's going to be bigger in quarter four because of uh, what's going on with abandons. So that's the product and category pages. Get chat in the checkout and get chat in the product pages and the category pages and track engagement and then engage with those people uh, that are starting to slip away. Last thing I want to touch on uh, is supercharging your abandoned cart emails and your other flows by adding live chat into them. So this is something I touched on at the beginning. Um, cart abandonment uh, processes are typically, you know, a reminder, a discount, and then a Hail Mary discount right? If you look at your Clavio account or your other uh, card abandonment accounts, usually what people do is a reminder and then a discount and a Hail Mary discount over a three to five day period. That's the majority of card abandonment sequences. But what that fails to address is people don't, people didn't forget to buy, like they weren't on your site and they're just like, they had a brain fart and then didn't move forward, right? Um, they didn't buy because something came up. They thought about something about the product. They realized, oh, I don't know if this is right for what I need. I don't know if it's going to arrive on time. I'm confused of why the shipping is so expensive. Um, you know, they have questions. And one of the things that you can do is in your abandoned cart emails, you can add live chat as a call to action. And so I'm not necessarily saying, you know, change significant things about your cart abandonment emails. All I'm saying is add live chat as a call to action in those emails so that people can get their questions answered. So for example, when somebody gets that abandoned cart email, they're going to see that uh, there's a uh, option to ask a question. They're going to say, oh yeah, I wonder what my shipping cost is going to be. They click it. It opens up on the website and answers, uh, answers their question. It opens straight to a live chat box. Your team's already there, available to answer those questions. Um, and the order's already there because of just how normal abandoned cart emails work. Um, and so this is absolutely something uh, that you should get in place uh, for your cart abandonment emails, but it's also something that you can use in your life cycle emails, your subscription upsells, all those types of things. Sparking up a conversation from an email and bringing it into a real-time conversation with live chat performs phenomenally. The response rate on those is really, really high to be able to get somebody to engage from the emails. And then once you have somebody on chat, they're going to convert anywhere from like four to seven times higher than people that don't chat. And so getting that conversation, getting that FaceTime with somebody on a chat um, gives you the ability to sell more effectively. And so this is one solid, solid way to get more people uh, into a place where you can sell them. And so those are the three major levers. Um, if you're going to be uh, using live chat to drive more sales, these are the things that you need to do. Get chat in the checkout process, use chat invites at the right time based on product engagement, and make sure that chat is in your cart recovery emails. Now, one thing I want to touch on here at the end um, is if you, you definitely do not need a service like ours to do all of this stuff. Um, if you're going to do the cart abandonment stuff, you do need to have your team on there 24 seven because it, it, it'd be weird to have a chat with us button 
and then have it not go anywhere because your team's offline. Um, but, but you can do the checkout stuff. You can do the product stuff. You can do all those types of things I mentioned with your own in-house team. You don't need our service to do this. This is not a pitch fest. Um, with that said, if you're going to run live chat yourself, there's a couple key mistakes that you need to be aware of because chat is something that um, if you do it poorly, it's something that will actually hurt your conversion rates. It'll bring down the conversion rate of your entire website. And the reason why that happens is people that would have bought without live chat, engage with the chat, have a poor experience based on what I'm gonna show you here in a second, and then they get interrupted and they leave. So people that would have bought without chatting in the first place, uh, get interrupted by a poor chat experience and then they bail and they don't buy. So it causes your entire conversion rate of the whole site to go down. So that is not what we want to have uh, happen. These are the mistakes that people typically make. Number one, do not use a pre-chat form. If you're asking your visitor for name, email, is this a pre-sales question or a post-sales question? Um, you know, where are you located? Um, what's your favorite hobby? Like you don't need that information to help a visitor. It's helpful for your marketing and it's helpful to uh, streamline things in your help desk maybe, um, but that's not in their benefit. And so you wanna have less friction. Let them get to a human, let them answer the question or ask the question and let them buy from you. Um, so don't use pre-chat forms. Second thing that's really important is you have to respond quickly. If you're not responding in less than 10 seconds to the first uh, messages that come in, the initial response time, that is where you start to lose a lot of people that would have bought without live chat. So first response time matters a ton. Average response time also matters, but first response time is where most people, when they try live chat, they drop the ball. They configure live chat, they get their team on it or they do it themselves. And uh, worst thing that can happen is if you configure those greetings, the automated greetings, if you configure those to show up at the perfect time and somebody sees that and they respond with, actually, yes, I had a question. I'm buying this for my wife and I mess up Valentine's Day every year and I really want to do it well this year. Is this going to arrive on time, right? They pour their heart out. They ask their question. They're ready to buy. And then your team doesn't respond. That is the worst possible situation that can happen. So response time matters. Track your response time. Less than 10 seconds is absolutely critical. Last thing I'll mention is nights and weekends. I mentioned that you don't need 24 seven coverage. That's, that's technically true. But if you look at your traffic, a lot of your traffic, 50 to 70% is going to come outside of business hours. Um, and so it's really, really important that you have uh, that you have your team available during nights and weekends also. So that's part of um, the things that you need to be aware of if you're gonna do live chat yourself. Don't use pre-chat forms, respond really, really quickly and be there at all hours to help your visitors. So wrapping up, uh, like I mentioned, we run live chat for over 100 stores. Our team can be available 24 seven. Um, if your store is already doing over $30,000 a month, it would make sense for us to do a strategy call where we'll dig into these numbers for your business. It, it will not be a salesy process. Derek's gone through it, he's referred people. There's people on this call that have gone through it. Uh, it's a strategy call where we just do what we just did with this case study but we do it with your Google Analytics account. And so we'll dig in, we'll look at your numbers and we'll say, look, here's the ways to drive more sales uh, by saving cart abandon. So we'll dig into that part. And whether or not you work with us, there'll be a lot of insights uh, that you'll get that you can apply from that call. But for everybody that's on the call, including people that are doing over 30K a month, we put together a Black Friday, Cyber Monday live chat blueprint uh, that you can use to really dominate Black Friday this year. Um, we've seen a lot of patterns in Black Fridays over the last uh, five years. This is gonna be our sixth uh, Black Friday. Uh, time goes by, I feel like I'm getting old. Um, but I've started to see these patterns um, each year. And so what this guide is gonna walk through is the right timing to launch your campaigns, uh, the right timing to warm up your audience via uh, your uh, ads, to basically get a head start on uh, the Black Friday promotions. It's gonna talk about how to craft your offers a good Black Friday offer is not 50% off the entire website because you're going to be spending more on ads, super, super competitive. If you bring down your margins, you're gonna wake up at Christmas and go, how did we lose so much money in Q4? I thought this was supposed to be good. Um, so it'll talk about how to craft a perfect offer that uh, is healthy financially for you. Um, and then it'll also go through the entire funnel of how to really maximize upsells and retargeting. Live chat's a part of the process here. Customer service is a part of the process. Um, but this guide really goes into everything that we've learned by going through um, all of these Black Fridays. And, you know, if you need help nailing customer service during that time, we can help you on the live chat side to drive more sales. 
We also run customer service teams for a lot of stores, which is basically our team working within your systems, handling the vast majority of customer service, email, Facebook, all that type of stuff. So if any of those would be helpful, feel free to reach out. Um, but otherwise, use live chat this Black Friday. Um, use live chat for all of Q4 and, and be ready because COVID has created a very crazy 2020. Uh, but for e-commerce, it, it's going to be a good thing for Q4. So be ready, maximize it. And I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much. And I would even say use live chat for 2021. Of course, it's going to continue in perpetuity. You know, um, I've, I had my own session on live chat in the past and, um, and we discovered, you know, about 60% of like the biggest e-commerce merchants have live chat installed on their site. But of the 100%, only 8% had a real person there manning live chat. <clears throat> that means that still today, the large brands aren't doing this right. The system you just laid out in real-time responses is how you do it right. And uh, it's great to have a partner like you that can get it done for merchants. <clears throat> so we have one question here, uh, yep. which I think is worth, worth addressing really quickly. How would Helpflow integrate with Gorgeous? Great question. So um, when uh, we use our own live chat system, um, but you guys will have access to all of the chats that happen. And when we need to uh, refer a chat into your team, which will happen about five to 7% of the time, um, we create, it creates a ticket within Gorgeous on the visitor's behalf as if they created themselves. You reply to that ticket directly from Gorgeous or any help desk. We integrate with all of them. Um, and then that will actually reply to the customer like a normal email ticket but it will also update our knowledge base for the future so we can handle that question in the future. So um, it does technically integrate awesome. with Gorgeous to show all those chats. That's, that's so powerful. And that's what makes uh, the kind of niche that you've carved out between live chat, working well with the help desks and understanding the sales components of business better than let's say traditional customer service agents. And we heard yesterday uh, for, from Gorgeous and uh, for Patriot about about that and zach is asking about billing we had an, a question about it. all right hit me with it how are you gonna how much are you gonna cost us <laughs> million dollars a month but i'll give you guys i'll, I'll give it to you for 50 percent. um so pricing pricing is based on how much website traffic you have it's a flat fee for 24 7 coverage um plans start at about three thousand dollars per month but again it's based on your website traffic what i will tell you is the based on the number of agents you will need to handle the traffic that you're getting and the chats you'll get because of that, it comes out to basically two and a half to $3 per hour per agent. So way cheaper than you could run it internally and way more effective. And we don't sign up anybody where their ROI is not going to be a home run. So that's what we do in the strategy process. We make sure the numbers make sense. And then from there, the service sells itself. Yeah. And so, so you're, yeah. How much does it cost is really, well, it should be making money for you. Otherwise I'm not taking you as a client. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's typically anywhere from like five to seven times. So five to seven times what you pay us is what we can generate in sales. We project that at the beginning in the strategy call. We track that from day one and, you know, typically it ends up higher than that, but that's based on what we can see in the abandons right up front. Yeah. And what I'll say from the, you know, but on the merchant side before, uh, before going to help flow, you need to have an established business. You should probably have some sort of customer service process. You need to really understand your margins. Uh, obviously he can't solve any shipping problems, logistics problems or sourcing problems for you. So if you don't have that stuff taken care of, then you're going to plug in John, you'll have this minimum monthly retainer, your whole site goes to crap. Like then all of a sudden, of course, this service won't be great for you. So you have these other things that you have to get sorted. He is a layer in your growth process, right? So it's like, okay, I've just hired an advertiser. That's going great. It's like, okay, perfect. We layer live chat in on top of that. Maybe we bring in a conversion rate optimization person as well. Right. And, and so you, you think about how that layers in on the growth process of a business typically. Yeah. I would say in the half a million million dollar range, you've, you started to fit uh, annually, you started to figure out your business. And that's exactly when you want to add in live chat. And of course, as yeah. John said, it is something you can absolutely do yourself, but make sure and do it right. Otherwise, bring in a professional. So, all right, one one my, quick note on that, 30 to 40K a month is kind of the threshold where a 24-7 team starts to make sense. That's on, yeah, you know, I, uh, I love it. I, I love that you have that number because I was predicting something around there as well as I was looking at the math on it. And it's kind of funny because I think everyone feels like that's unobtainable or it's too much of a cost or too much of a risk. And so I love that you're able to really bring that down to a pretty early stage store, I would say. I yeah. think, um, yeah, oh my gosh, I, the, I don't, the future should be everyone has live chat. 
Um, and John, I, I'd be interested to see, I, I know, that, I think we talked about you, you're not moving into phone anytime soon, but I saw a few tools are now doing a lot of video live chat in the sales mm -hmm. process. I'd love to see you move in this direction with Helpflow. <laughs> yeah, we've got some stuff, some stuff in the works for next year. We're focused on nailing Q4 this year, but we've got a lot of tech Absolutely. stuff we're testing behind the that scenes. <laughs> completely fair. Awesome. John, thanks so much. I'm going to let you go as we move into our next session. <laughs> thanks guys. Take care.